Hello everyone and welcome to Bridge is for Everyone. My name is Jad. This is episode 5 of the Learn to Play series. In episode 4, you finished bidding the hand that you first saw in episode 1 with a bid of 4 hearts. In this episode, you'll learn more about major suit contracts. But before we do that, I'd like you to understand how these bids fit into the overall game of bridge and why I'm teaching you this first. As you saw in episode one, bridge is a game of two parts, the auction where you bid and the play where you try to win enough tricks to fulfill that contract. Novice bridge players who have not learned to bid correctly during the auction often score poorly. This is because the contracts they bid are either too low or too high. If the contract is too low, it's easy to play but gives a low score. If the contract is too high, it may well be impossible and will give no score. If the contract is at the correct level, it will be possible to play and will give a good score. In episode one, you learned the mechanics of the play, which are quite simple. So once you learn to bid correctly, you can start playing regular bridge. Mastering the play is the trickiest part of the game and is something you will learn as much by experience as by my teachings. I'll cover all the basic aspects of play later in this series. I've explained why I'm covering the bidding first, but why am I showing you the major suit contracts first? After all, there are also minor suit contracts and no trump contracts. There are two reasons for this. Major suit contracts are far more common in bridge than minor suit contracts and they are far easier to bid than no trump contracts. In all previous episodes, I've used full-sized playing cards in these videos. This was to give you a realistic idea of what you will see when handling physical cards. But from now on, I'll be using abbreviated images of the cards which contain all the same information but in a smaller size. These images omit the body of the card but include the corner pips which is all that can be seen when the cards are overlapped. This will allow me to show you more cards at the same time. Abbreviated cards like these are used in almost all electronic bridge games, including apps and online play. This is how your hand from episode one would look using abbreviated cards. After you successfully bid and made four hearts with this hand, your left hand opponent, West, is next to deal. The reference number for the next deal is number 101. West Deals. This is a hand from my standard bridge course. Here it is. What is the value of this hand? First, count your high card points. You have 3 plus 1 plus 1 equals 5 high card points. Now count long points. All your suits have four cards or less, so you have no long suits and score zero long points. So your hand is worth a total of five points. Now check the shape of the hand. You have at least two cards in each suit and no suits with only two cards. Not only is your hand balanced, it is what is known as a flat hand. This is a, as close to an even spread of cards among the suits as is possible. West passes. Your partner opens the bidding with one spade and East passes. 
Here is your hand. What should you bid? First, what is partner's bid telling you? Remember, both major suits follow the same rules. So partner has a hand worth 13 to 21 points with five or more spades. Now, as always when partner bids, you will revalue your hand. First, because partner opened with a major suit, you will check for a fit in this suit. Do you have a fit? Here are the rules. If your partnership has a total of eight or more cards in a suit, then it, it has a fit in that suit. Partner has at least five spades and you have three for a total of eight or more. So you have a fit in spades. Because you have a fit, you need to remove all long points and add in any dummy points. All your suits have at least three cards. So with no short suits, you have zero dummy points. Your hand is still valued at a total of five points. So what should you bid? Here is the rule. With only five points, you must pass. Your hand is simply too weak to bid. Any other bid would mislead partner. You pass and West also passes. That's a bid followed by three passes in a row, which ends the bidding. The contract is one spade by your partner, North. As I mentioned earlier, this part of the Learn to Play series is focused on the bidding. So let's move on to the next hand. The reference for this hand is number 102. It is partner's turn to deal. This is your hand you immediately value the hand. You identify that you have a hand with eight high card points and zero long points for a total of eight points. It is a flat and therefore balanced hand. Partner opens one heart and east passes. You know that partner has a hand worth 13 to 21 points with five or more hearts. Because partner opened a major suit, you check for a fit. You add your three hearts to the five promised by partner's bid and confirm that you do have a fit. Now to revalue your hand by replacing long points with dummy points. You have no short suits and therefore zero dummy points, leaving you with a total of eight points. You apply the rule for raising partner's suit. With eight points, a bid of two hearts is appropriate. After your two heart bid, West passes. Your partner uses the rule you learned in episode three. Partner knows that the partnership does not have 25 or more points and passes. The current bid is two hearts, and with four hearts not possible, partner wants to keep the bidding as low as possible. After all, partner knows the scoring system. Unless you bid to four hearts, whenever you make your contract, your score will be the same. So in these circumstances, it is best to keep the contract as low as possible. Your partner passes and keeps the contract at two hearts. This means you only need to make eight tricks. East also passes to end the bidding. As you learned in episode one, partner will play this hand and you will be dummy. The reference for the next hand is number 108. It is East's turn to deal. This is your hand you immediately value the hand. You identify that you have a hand with 16 high card points and one long point for a total of 17 points. It has two doubletons, so the hand is not balanced, and it has no singletons or voids, 
so it is not unbalanced. You have a semi-balanced hand. East passes. What should you bid? Here are the rules. With 16 high card points, you may be able to open one no trump. But your hand is not balanced, so you cannot open no trump. With one long suit, spades, you will bid spades. Your 17 points are in the 13 to 21 point range, so you open one spade. West passes and your partner bids two spades. Here is the rule partner used. Partner's bid shows a fit in spades and six to nine points. Combined, the partnership has 23 to 26 points and a spade fit. You know you will want to play a spade contract, but how many? Here is the rule. In order to bid four spades, which you know will score well, you need a minimum of 25 points. You have 23 to 26, so you might have enough, but it is not certain. Let's analyse this more closely. You know partner has six to nine points. With six or seven, the partnership does not have enough to bid four spades. But with eight or nine, the partnership should play four spades. You would like to convey this information to partner. The only way to do this is with a bid. Here is the rule. You opened the bidding one spade and partner responded with two spades. If you pass, you may underbid and miss a good score. But if you bid four spades, you may overbid and have an impossible contract. If you bid three spades, this is how partner will respond. With six or seven points, partner will pass, knowing that you probably do not have enough to play four spades. But with eight or nine points, partner will bid four spades, knowing that you definitely have enough points to play that contract. You bid three spades, West passes, and you are eager to know what partner bids. Your bid is known as an invitation. You are inviting partner to bid four spades with enough points. In this case, partner passes. You later learn that partner had only seven points and made the correct bid. This episode has covered more of the basics of bridge and focused on more ways to bid when the partnership opens one of a major and has a fit. In future episodes, I'll cover everything else you will need to be a confident and successful bridge player. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to this channel. Until next time, this is Jad reminding you that bridge is for everyone.